Hello friends, welcome to the channel. In this video, I'll be walking you through my little experiment with capacitive touch input on the Arduino. In addition to exploring a little alternate method I devised for detecting rotations. Currently working on a couple of projects that necessitates a form of rotary control that's contactless, continuous, bidirectional, and easily customizable to fit different project types. Potentiometers and rotary encoders come to mind. However, potentiometers are neither contactless nor continuous. They are also known to wear out and eventually become unresponsive. A rotary encoder, while usually more durable compared to potentiometers, also doesn't satisfy all my project requirements. In a nutshell, I have to come up with a unique way to encode rotations in my project. I happen to have tiny magnets and hall effect sensors on hand, so I based my detection on them. The idea is to have magnets with alternating poles on the moving part of the system, and then use precisely placed all effect sensors to detect the rotations. With this setup, there will be no contact between the rotating part and the stationary or electronics part. Hence, durability won't be a problem, and continuous rotation is basically a feature. Now, this is not a new concept. Similar setups are already in use in a couple of other rotary encoding applications. I merely devised a new implementation that's specifically suited for my use case. Here's a little graphical explanation of how the setup works. The half a ring with the alternating magnetic poles revolves around two stationary all effect sensors. Here you can see what that looks like physically. I glued the magnet around the half a ring and the sensors are glued to the inner one. Sensors are offset from each other in such a way that one of them will always be in the neutral position whenever the other is facing either of the poles. So from this setup, I derived these tables. The tables show the state of each sensor with respect to the other. So when sensor 1 is facing north, I know sensor 2 will be in the neutral position, which is represented as a zero. From that, I can further deduce the states that represent one clockwise step and one anticlockwise step, based on the four possible start positions. For example, if sensor 1 is currently in between north and south, I know that if the state changes to south, the half ring moved one step anti-clockwise and if the state changes to not, it has moved one step clockwise. Let's say it did move clockwise to not. This becomes the new start position and once again, I can tell that if the state changes to not south, that's an anti-clockwise rotation and if the state changes to south not, a clockwise rotation. The continuous repetition of this process is how the rotations are registered. Another thing I need to mention is the operation of the Hall effect sensors. The range of analog values from the sensor is divided into two, so the lower half could be assigned to the north pole and the upper half to the south, or vice versa. What this means is the middle position will always read as the same analog value, regardless of the orientation of the magnet. So north-south or south-north, it's all the same to the sensor. Therefore, all these north south and south north on the tables are all representative of the neutral position. This makes the conditions in each table only 50% valid, which is why the setup requires two sensors, just in case you were wondering. The code for reading the rotation follows three major steps. First is defining the range of analog values that represent the neutral states, the north and the south states. The next step is setting the start positions with the conditions derived from the tables. The third step is to check for rotations with four if statements that represent the four possible start positions and their appropriate clockwise and anticlockwise conditions. This is also where the desired actions are carried out. Right now, I have code set up to increment or decrement a number. could also be used as a digital light dimmer. You can basically set it up to do whatever a normal rotary encoder can do. The knob could also be made bigger or smaller depending on where and how you want to use it, which makes it perfect for the things I plan to do with it.
You'll also notice the little vibration move off to the side. I added that so I can have haptic feedback as I turn through each incremental step. This just makes the whole thing feel more intuitive and natural. Here's a diagram showing the wired connections. I will also leave a link to it in the description, together with a link to the code. The second part of this test setup is the capacitive touch input. I am using the Arduino capacitive touch library. I will also link to the page in the description. The library works by sending data from one pin to another, usually through a resistor, and then calculating the time the transmission takes. So whenever additional capacitance is introduced to the receiving pin, the transmission is a little delayed. This change in transmission time is what indicates the touch. However, since this is a time-based detection that's derived from an inconsistent surface, the resulting signal is often very noisy. Capacitive touch in general is highly susceptible to noise. In extremely noisy environments, the signal will look something like this. The thickness of the material separating the conductive surface and your finger, the size of the conductive surface, the value of the resistor used, level of interference and type of power supply used, all these factors contribute to the resulting signal. As you can see, it can be difficult to build a dependable capacitive touch control with this signal. However, the torch is still identifiable from the noise. It just needs a little processing, which is exactly what I have done. I have written a comprehensive Arduino library dedicated to processing and making sense of the chaotic signal. Here's what the signal looks like after a little processing. In addition to cleaning up the signal, I also added functions for detecting double tap, short press, long press, and the traditional single tap. Now I won't bore you with the details of what's going on under the hood. I'll just leave a link to the GitHub repository in the description. You'll find a little more information there. You can see the vibration mover also gives me haptic feedback when I touch the pad, just as it does with the knob. Note, the pad could be any conductive surface with a wire attached to it. Capacitive touch is essentially just a cooler alternative to push buttons. So anything you can think to do with a push button, the capacitive touch can do too. I know all this might seem a little pointless right now, but I promise you feel differently once you see some of the ways I'll be implementing this concept in my future projects. So watch out for that. If any of you guys would like to try out any of the concepts discussed in this video, there will be a bunch of useful links in the description. Feel free to check them out. Thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you learned something, and I'll see you guys in the next one.